Hello and welcome. Dear learners, in this video, we will be talking about female reproductive organs in flowering plants. We have already learned that the innermost world of a flower makes up female reproductive part known as gynoecium. The free occurring unit of gynoecium is known as pistil and a pistil may contain one or several carpels. On this basis, there are monocarpillary or multicarpillary pistils containing one or several carpels respectively. A multicarpillary pistil may have fused pistils or free pistils constituting syncarpus or apocarpus arrangement. Let us have an overview of the parts of pistil. There are three distinct regions. The terminal region known as stigma is landing platform for pollen grain which is connected to the basal swollen part known as ovary through a long and slender style. Ovary contains ovarian cavity and placenta is also located inside. From placenta ovules arise and number of ovules may be one in some plants like wheat and paddy and may be many in other plants known like papaya watermelon or orchids. Megasporangium or ovule arises from placenta and is connected to it through a stalk-like structure known as funicle. Helium is the junction between ovule and funicle. Integuments are the protective coverings around ovule. Based on the number of coverings present, we have four different types of ovules. First one is ategmic ovule having no covering. Second is unitegmic ovule having one protective covering. Third is bitegmic ovule having two protective coverings like the example shown here. And last one is tritegmic ovule with three integuments. Integuments completely enclose a mass of cell rich in reserved food material. This is known as nucellus. There is a small opening in integument that exposes nucellus is known as micropyle and the region where micropyle or the opening is present is known as micropylar pole. Opposite to micropyle, there is a basal end known as chalaza. In the nucellus of ovule, embryo sac or female gametophyte is located. Megasporogenesis is formation of megaspores in the micropylar region of megasporangium. In this process, a megaspore mother cell with dense cytoplasm and a prominent nucleus undergoes meiosis to produce four megaspores. Out of four, three degenerates and the only functional megaspore undergoes elaborate monosporic development to give rise to the female gametophyte. Monosporic development begins with the nucleus of functional megaspore undergoing mitosis to produce two nuclei which moves to opposite poles. At this stage, the embryo sac is known as two nucleate embryo sac. In order to produce eight nucleate embryo sac, two further mitotic divisions are required. All of these cell divisions are essentially free nuclear divisions, which means that nuclear division is not immediately followed by cell wall formation. After the formation of eight nuclei in the embryo sac, six of these eight nuclei are surrounded by cell wall and organized into cells. The remaining nuclei are known as polar nuclei, which is situated below the egg apparatus in large central cell. Thus, the typical female gametophyte or embryo sac is organized and developed. The image shows process of megasporogenesis, including monospore development. 
It begins with omega spore mother cell having distinct nucleus and a dense cytoplasm which undergoes meiosis to produce a megaspore dyad and thereafter megaspore tetrad. Out of the four megaspores, three degenerate and the only functional megaspore will undergo monosporic development in order to produce a mature embryo sac. It passes through two nucleate stage, four nucleate stage and finally reaches eight nucleate stage. Out of eight nuclei, cell wall formation takes place for the six nuclei in order to organize them as proper cells. At the micropylar end, there are two synergids and an egg. Below this, we have two polar nuclei and at the chalazal end, there are three antipodal cells. This is structure of a mature female gametophyte. This is all for this video. In next video, we'll be discussing pollination. Stay tuned and thank you.